I'm here today with Bill Williams, and he's got this awesome 19, uh, was it? 30. 30, 30 yep. Roadster pickup. Roadster pickup that he built. Uh, this was the uh, first vehicle that you ever built, right? Well, like this, yeah. I've had a couple of Model A's okay. I restored, yeah. But this is the first one from scratch, basically. Correct, yeah. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's kind of start at the front, and, uh, and we'll work our way back, basically. All right. All right. Well, uh, tell me about, uh, well... You mentioned when I came over to talk to you the first time that, uh, first of all, you modded your own uh, your own headlight bar there. Yes, I did. I made uh, yep. stainless. Yep. That's correct. Uh, stainless steel, and you leather wrapped the the old bumper mount there. Yeah. The bumper bar, and as you can see, under the hood, there is a flathead in there. Now, why don't you tell me about the the story about that flathead? Well, I I bought it from a friend of mine, and uh, I had it put rebuilt over to uh, Nevada at the uh, hydraulic cylinder store. But, or, and anyway, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Lyle Gustin, put it together, and then I had it redone uh, by Steve Sullivan, and, uh, and then we put a four and an eighth inch crank, and uh, it was already bored out to 60,000s and had a, it's got a little three quarter 77 Disky B cam in it. And uh, you can see two uh, nine Super 7 carburetors, Said electric fuel pump and electronic ignition. Okay. Uh, so what size cubic inch is it then, do you? Uh, it's a, a 273 cubic inch now and probably 200 plus horsepower. Okay. And what made you decide to go with the flathead? A fr another friend of mine gave me a flathead and uh, it turned out that it wasn't any good. He didn't know that at the time, but then I got kind of hooked on him and, and uh, I was working on this Model A frame that I had an extra one, and so I just decided to do this. And I got a, a book from Speedway, how to build a traditional Ford hot rod, and uh, that's how I got started. Okay. And you decided to just go with the iron heads on it. I did. I just thought they looked yeah, vintage. Yes. Okay. And uh, what do you got behind the motor for uh, a transmission? Well, I have a C4 automatic transmission that I got from Joey Lindahl, and uh, the rear end's an 8.8. .8 the Ford rear end that uh, uh, quick performance and aims shortened the axles and, and uh, changed the gear ratio. Now it's a 308 rear end. Okay. Well, why don't we uh, take a look inside? Okay. Okay. Well, why don't you tell me about the, the dash cluster and everything? Okay, it's, it has a, a 32. A Ford dash also has a 32 Ford uh, radiator shell. Okay. And the dash, I got uh, my uh, instruments from uh, Speedway. They're uh, Stuart Warner, the Wings edition. And I got a tilt and steering wheel. That's an I did it. And I have a 1940 Ford 15 inch steering wheel. And the shifter is a low car. And the interior and outside the poster is done by. Uh, John Vetter of Boone and Mike Day of Rippy. Okay. And uh, I noticed you have a little pinstriping going on there. Uh, yes, I got. Talk about that. Uh, yeah, the body, the, the finished body and the paint was done by Eric Dillon, and uh, and then he pinstriped it for me. Yep. And you got your little W there. That's kind of custom for you, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. put that on there. I didn't know it until I picked it up. That's what he had done. Yep. And uh, you got that in another little place. We'll talk about when we get to the. Okay. There. So what made you go with, let's talk about the color combo real quick before we go back there. What made you go with uh, brown with the yellow? I just thought it went well together and... Uh, kind of a classic leather look. Yeah, my wife and I, we, well, we both like, well, I really like yellow. And, and uh, it's either, the you know, choice is either red, yellow, or black. Yep. And for a hot rod. And, and uh, I, I just happened to like yellow and I thought this... This two-tone interior looked. My wife really liked it too. We picked that out, and, and uh, better done the seats. 
and the interior here. And Dave done, done some more work inside and then he put the, uh, the canvas top and, and, uh, and uh, I, this body is from uh, all, the all steel body from Brookville. Uh, let's see what they call that, Brook, Brookville Roaster. And uh, the box is six inches shorter and the cab is six inches longer and everything fits right on a Model A frame. Yeah, she has a nice little stance to her too. Yeah, I just, just redone that here about a month and a half ago. I bought uh, different coilover shocks from uh, Eric Dillon, their uh, ride tech. Now your rims, um, are those? Uh, the wheels are uh, original 35 Ford uh, wheels and the tires are 616 white walls that I got from uh, Diamondback. Yeah, she has a very traditional kind of early 50s hot rod feature. That's, that's what I wanted, yeah. Yep. Well, let's uh, let's take a look in the, under the tailgate. Uh, just load it. You want me to unload it? Well, no, it's okay. You just pop in there, and if there's any little points you want to uh, point out, details. And you got your another extra little W in there. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that quick. Okay. And it's a driver, people. That's why there's stuff in the back. <laughs> yeah. The. Uh, the, the 35 or newer Ford pickups, uh, the, the box and the front of the box was all the same elevation, and uh, the 30s had had the, the dip cut out, but uh, I made a, a a frame to fit that, and then I put a, a stiffer in it. And I decided, well, since it's having one stiffer, I'd just make a W there. If I'd done that out, I was three quarter inch tube. That looks nice. It's a nice little custom touch. It makes it your own. Yep. Thank you. Of course, the neighbors decided to mow the lawn. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the joys of... Uh, but he's uh, a good neighbor. Yeah, he is. But just, uh, I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to do some uh, audio adjusting for that little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's close and, the rock. Uh, I got it. It's a wood, wood oh, yeah. bottom, too. Yep. Let's not forget that. Yep. Traditional wood. Now, is that, that looks like it's oak, isn't it? It is. Yep. Yes. I stained it walnut. Yeah. She's a handsome truck. Oh, thank you. Truck. I built it for a driver. That's the. Well, and that's kind of the, the whole point of uh, the project here is to feature drivers more than anything. Yeah, I didn't. I trailer didn't... queens. Uh, there's plenty of shows about trailer queens. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. Kind of just take her, just put her around town, basically. If you want. Okay. Now that my hose is done, maybe kind of cruise down through there. Those flatheads have a sound of their own, don't they? They do. Uh I got three quarter cam. That was my wife's idea, too. Just making sure we're closed here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep, we're good. Yeah, some motors just have a, a distinct sound of their own. Oh, Chevrolet sound the same. <laughs> but they kind of do. They kind of do. Am I being recorded? Yeah, you're being recorded. Oh, it's yeah, okay, though. I got that plug in it. <laughs> so how many years have you had this one, then, all together? Uh, I started about four and a half years ago. That's okay. Yeah, you, know, you just got it done about what, a year ago, then? Uh, yeah. I, okay. That's right. I, uh, I just had an extra mile away from it. And uh, back, back in the day, the farmers if they had a Model A, or they'd take the frame and make a, a trailer out of it. So it took me a couple of days to unbolt and uh, cut and dry and get it back to the original. Then I put a, a better um, front cross member in it.
my wife helped me with hot rivet it, and then, and then I uh, z the, the back cross member, you know, cut it off and raise it up. Mm -hmm. You had to get the stance a little bit better. Well, yeah, that lowers the rear end two and a half inches. The front end, I bought a four inch drop back from the speedway. Started out with that stance. And then I wanted a little bit more, so I got the power shots. talking to people you can always tell you know there's a couple companies that everyone buys stuff from you know at least around here almost everyone I've talked to quick performance speedway <laughs> yeah well I bought some stuff from Bratton and then I think they moved to uh, North Carolina well that's where they're at North Carolina and uh, I bought some stuff I used to buy everything from Bratton and Birdhaven and Colfax that's when I was doing my model A's in the original. Yeah, the guy that's been the exhaust for me is a Bill Lehman. Oh. Bagged the muffler, yep. yeah. Um, and he drags. Yep, I remember him. As a, as a kid up in uh, Humboldt, he was always up there. His, uh, I believe it's, I can't remember what relation, but his relation used to work at my dad's shop, so that's oh. how I knew him. So. take any fancy, uh, I know I have to take some, but adapter plates and everything to get the C4 to work with the flathead? I'm glad you asked that. It does. It's about a $900 uh, I read a lot of my books. They recommended uh, flat, the Flatomatic, the Flatel company in uh, Oregon. Right? Right. That name Gene Vance. Very informative guy, he sent me instructions. I talked to him quite a bit on the phone. And then, uh, bought his product, he comes from Very good instructions. And it's the, the torque, torque converter and the flex plate uh, comes with it. And it just bolts right up to your flathead. or not having to rely on an old like 39 Ford gearbox or anything. Well, the guy I bought my engine from, from Slater, Burke, Gary Bergstrand, he said, Bill, he said, you don't want to be shifted. No. <laughs> and as you can see, it would be a heck of a lot of room for a flood generator. So I'm glad I followed his advice. And then I looked at different uh, kind of brake systems. Yeah, the less pedals you have in this limited floor space, the better. Pardon me? The less pedals you have on your limited floor space, the better. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised you don't have a tack in here, though. I do. Oh, I do. oh, never mind. Right there, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I wouldn't mess up my dash. I got more than that. the old yeah. original. Yeah, I could have bought one, but I kind of like the, the old period type. 
So on the highway, what are you doing for about RPM? Uh, around 60, about uh, 2200. That's not too bad. If I run about 70, I'm running about 25, 600. No, that's why I put the, had to put the 308 rear end instead of the 378 to the yeah. uh, My wife, she'd kind of like to have tire school. Yeah. But if I put a three and a quarter or something deeper than that, then... Then you'd almost want to go to like an AOD or something. Yeah. Well, then, well, yeah, then it's going to be a part of my engine. Huh? Plus, if I stepped on it, I'd be fish tanned. I didn't, the way it is right now, it's safe. I can do that. And not lose me. Yeah. Yeah, because these don't weigh, Nothing. well, probably, you're probably pushing, what, 1,900 pounds max? I with, a, with a full tank of gas, and uh, around, probably around 2,200. That's a most. Yeah. 2,200, 2,500. I just want to take the opportunity to thank Bill for spending a couple hours with me and allowing me to film him and his wonderful hot rod. He is a great example of an early 1950s Model A hot rod with a few appointments for modern day roads. He's a great example that you're never too late in life to start a new adventure. Heck, Bill didn't start building cars until he was in his early 50s. Look at the results people, they speak for themselves. If you think you can, you probably can. It just takes some time some space, some tools, and a little money. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Kick all the butt, take all the names, but most importantly, kill with kindness. We'll see you next time here on The Average Show Hot Rod Show.